Welcome to this second video in our build up to the launch of the new edition of 40K. In this video, we're going to take a look at a way to paint the bad guys, depending on your perspective, the Necrons. So to begin with, I'm going to give the whole model a base coat of scale 75 decayed metal. I'm using the airbrush for this and I'm thinning it about one to one with life color thinner. If you don't have an airbrush, by all means you can brush paint this base coat on and it does mean that later on you're not going to need to black out the skeleton. I'm just looking for a nice even coverage to give us a nice base to work from. The first highlight I'm going to use scale 75 Victorian brass and for this I'm just picking one light source at the front, one light source at the back and just catching all those areas that that light source would hit. Just brings a nice variation in color and tone to the model. Now we're gonna bring a little bit of color and a little bit of age to the bronze on the armor. And for this, I'm using Scale 75 Fantasy Games Despair Green. I'm thinning it down loads with water. And now I'm gonna give the model quite a liberal wash with this green. So we wanna stain the whole surface tint it or filter it, whatever you want to call it, just changing that colour ever so slightly. And if we get too much of it pooling, we can just move it around with our brush to prevent that leaving any nasty tide marks. And once it's dry, we'll give it a quick dry brush with Scale 75 Moonstone Alchemy. And yes, I do wish that I had pinned this model better. Now we need to go in and paint the skeleton on the model. For this I'm using Vallejo model color black. And as I said earlier, if you've chosen to brush paint the armor panels, then hopefully you won't need to take very long doing this at all. The reason I like the Vallejo model color black is it has a very matte finish. Now I want to pick out any silver parts of the model. So predominantly on the weapon here, but any of the cool little wires and things that are hanging out as well. For this, I'm using Vallejo Metal Color Series Steel. It's a great paint through the airbrush, but it's also really nice to apply with a brush. The reason I'm using a small plastic well palette, however, is if you put this paint on a wet palette, it tends to separate pretty quickly. Let's make up an oil wash. Any brown will do, but for this, I'm using a Burnt Umber, Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color. And I want quite a heavy wash, so I'm putting plenty of paint in here. You can see on the side. Now I'm gonna use this wash all over the black skeleton. We're not gonna do any highlighting on it. We're not gonna do any shading on it. What we're gonna do is use the heavy pigment in the oil wash, and we're gonna apply it in such a way that that pigment will really pool and settle in those recesses. And it will give us a really cool effect once it's dried. So don't worry about being too heavy handed at this stage. And you might find that you need to apply it a couple of times. I'm trying my best not to get it on any of the bronze armor color. I'd like to leave that as we have it, just to create a bit more contrast with that shiny finish on the bronze color and a much, much more matte finish, some weird, ceramic composite or something or whatever we think the skeleton might be made out of. I'm also going to wash it over the silver parts just to age up the metal a bit. I don't want it quite as heavy on these so I will go over any areas where it's pooling and just wick up a bit of that paint on the brush. One of the standout things on the Necrons are their glowing weapons. We haven't got plastic rods anymore, so for this, I'm going to have to paint it in. To begin with, I'm going to use a white ink. White ink has an awful lot of pigment, so it's a really strong colour. But it's also really, really thin. And you can see here, as we paint it out, it's not losing any of that opacity. I paint it into all the areas that I want to make bright green later. It washes in fairly easily. And if I get any on the black, it's very easy to wipe off with a Q-tip. To 
So just take your time, be as neat as possible. And I'm going to apply it in a couple of layers. Inks are really easy to work with. And you see here on the second pass, it covers really, really well. Any acrylic artist ink will do. Now we need our glow in the dark green. So for this, again, I've used Dana and Rowney, but any brand of acrylic artist ink will work. And I'm using light green. And just like I did with the white, I'm gonna paint the green in. And because we have that really bright base underneath from the white, we're gonna get a super vibrant green here. This isn't by any means OSL, and that's something we might look at in a later video. But it does give us a really strong contrast against the fairly dull armour colour and the very dull black skeleton. And it's this kind of contrast that can make an army look really cool on the table. See here I've got a bit of the paint on the armour. Really quick with a Q-tip. can wipe ink off, no problem. I've done the same to the eyes. Just gives them that kind of creepy glow. But as I say, this isn't true OSL. Now for a few other details on the model. I've base coated them in decayed metal again. Energy coils or orbs or whatever you think they are. But I figured a little bit more colour on the model wouldn't hurt. To this sort of power cell thing here. And then I'm going to highlight those with GW Screaming Bell. It's this really nice sort of metallic red coppery colour. Just gives us another point of interest on the model. There's not much left to do now to get him ready for the table. But I wanted to just give it a little bit more pop. So I've taken Vallejo Model Air Steel. I'm just going to put a few edge highlights on. Just on the weapon here. And I might do a small amount on the actual armour itself as well. Get that bit of fluff off. You can see by using this much brighter steel over the dulled down uh, oil washed steel underneath, we get a super high contrast. And again, it's this type of thing that really can make an army stand out on the tabletop. So here he is, ready to take it to those boys in blue. You can see how playing around with a really quite limited amount of colours, we can still get a really effective scheme that's going to make this army a pleasure to look at as it's wiping you off the board. By picking a variety of finishes, so the metallic on the armour, the very matte finish of the black on the skeleton, and the super in-your-face green, they all come together and complement each other with a really high degree of contrast. If you've enjoyed this video, then hit the like button. And if you want to keep up with any upcoming tutorials, then hit subscribe as well. We'll see you in the next one.